What's up my seam queens, my bros that sew, and my thems that hem. Today I'm gonna be teaching all of you how to make a sexy little bodysuit out of a simple band t-shirt. Our supply list is gonna be a little bit more lengthy than some of my other projects just cause we're gonna do snaps at the straps and at the crotch, that way if you're at a concert and you gotta use a porta potty, you can get in and out of it without having to get completely naked, which is always a plus. The band tee that I used for this tutorial is from the Zabellion Triangle. They're a symphonic death metal band from Texas. If you like all the music that you're hearing in this tutorial, it is from their album, The Banks at the Rubicon. In the link below, you can find their CD and you can also buy a t-shirt from them. And if you prefer to stream on Spotify or just to download the album and listen that way, you can also find it there. So you're gonna lay out some craft paper or you can use like old newspaper, any sort of sheet of paper that you can trace out a design on. I'm using a one piece bathing suit to trace my pattern. You can also use an existing bodysuit that you have or you can kind of get creative and use a combination of a tank top and some underwear that fit you well, but that one might require figuring out the length. So you might need to test the pattern a couple times. And I'm just laying it out flat and tracing the pattern. And as you can kind of see, it kind of sits a little wrinkled. So I'm just kind of stretching it out as I trace the pattern. So I get the exact shape of this garment. Now I'm folding over the back side of the bathing suit to trace the front because it's a little bit of a higher cut than the back is. One thing to remember when you're making a pattern too is that this item that I'm making a pattern based off of is a very stretchy material. And if you're working with a band t-shirt that doesn't have a lot of stretch to it, you're gonna wanna give a little additional seam allowance or you're going to wanna back the bodysuit with a very stretchy spandex fabric instead of the back of the t-shirt fabric. I'm just making all my curves smoother by using these pattern drafting tools that I got off Amazon, and I'll have a link for those in the description below. <laughs> using your craft scissors, go ahead and cut out your pattern. Generally, you want to leave a seam allowance, which is enough space to where you can get a stitch in there so the garment is not too tight. You can either mark this on your pattern by tracing just outside of the pattern that you made, or you can just remember to cut a little excess when you're cutting out the item that out of fabric. Now I'm just tracing the back of the garment. I also made sure to label my pattern front and back, so that way when I'm using this in the future, I'll remember which is which. Now, just like with the front, I'm reinforcing the curves and making them nice and smooth with these pattern drafting tools. And a quick double check on the width on the straps. Once again, cutting out the pattern with my craft scissors, not my sewing scissors. <clears throat> now I'm gonna lay out my shirt as flat as possible and with the design as centered as possible. I'm gonna lay my pattern down with, you can use pattern weights or you can kind of pin it on there. I'm double checking the distance from each side of my pattern to the logo on the shirt. This is a good way to make sure that your design is centered.
Now I'm tracing my pattern with a watercolor pencil. You can also use Taylor's chalk. Double checking that measurement just one more time to make sure everything's good. And I'm gonna take it out a little bit on this side and take it in a little bit on the opposite side just to even it out. Now I'm using fabric scissors to cut out the pattern. I'm not cutting through the back of the t-shirt either. And it should look something like this. To make up for the stretchiness for the pattern that I used, I'm actually not using the back of the band t-shirt, even though it was very soft and stretchy. I want a little extra stretch so I got this nice stretchy black cotton fabric. Now that I have those pieces cut out, I'm going to roll the seams along the top for a nice finished look. You can skip this step if you want, but I think that it really adds a nice touch. And if you're going to be adding the rivets at the end, this is going to give you a nice thickness of fabric that's gonna let those sit in there just right. So I'm just folding it over once and then a second time and then pinning in place. Most of sewing is a lot of cutting, measuring, and pinning, and a little bit of sewing. One pro tip I can offer too is have all your pins facing in the same direction. It's gonna make it a lot easier when you're running it through the sewing machine. Now I've got the front all pinned in place. I'm gonna repeat the same process with the back of the bodysuit. Now that those are pinned down, it's time to sew them in place. I'm using a reinforced straight stitch, so that way it has a nice little bit of stretch and give for, you know, getting it on your bust or moving around. You could also do a zigzag stitch if your sewing machine does not have a reinforced straight stitch. If you're new to using a sewing machine, Think of guiding the fabric through, not forcing it through. The machine and the foot will do the work for you. You're just making sure that it's on the right path. Now we're gonna sew snaps on the crotch. I just bought some snap tape like this. But before I do that, I'm gonna go ahead and pin up the sides of the bodysuit. So I'm just lining up both of my edges and just laying pins down. Now I'm gonna turn it inside out and I'm going to pin in place the snaps that I'm gonna use. There's one side that kind of pokes out like a nipple and then one side that snaps into it. 
and you just want to make sure that you snap them together after you pin them on the garment to make sure that you put them in the proper place. You want them to lay flat and smooth when they're snapped together, just like you would on a bodysuit that you would buy at the store. So just double check after you've pinned it in place that it snaps like you would want it to snap on the finished garment. Just like that. Now let's sew all this in place. I'm starting with a reinforced straight stitch to go down the sides of the bodysuit. And I'm also gonna do a zigzag stitch for a little extra reinforcement. Now for sewing the snaps in place, I'm going to use a straight stitch going one way, but along the edges where I had trimmed the snap tape. It's a type of fabric that'll start to fray, so I'm just using a zigzag stitch to keep it from fraying. If you want, you can also skip this step and just sew the two crotch seams together, but you won't have a snap in out feature on your bodysuit. So if you have to go to the bathroom, then you're gonna have to get completely naked to get out of your bodysuit. Now that that part's done, it's time to make some straps. If you want, you can just buy pre-made straps and put those on, or you could just use elastic, or even I've used the bottom uh, seam on a t-shirt and just folded it over and sewn it for that. But I wanna do my signature faux leather straps on this. So I've cut a long strip of faux leather and a nice long piece of elastic. And I'm just folding over the faux leather on that and pinning it in place. I'm just doing one long continuous piece, but I'm gonna cut it into two and use it for the straps. Now I'm just sewing it down with a straight stitch. Since this is a thicker fabric, sometimes you'll have to do things like change the type of sewing noodle you use, change the foot on the sewing machine, or just change the thread tension depending upon your machine and what kind of fabric you're working with. Now that those are done, I've cut it in half and I'm going to sew it onto the back of the bodysuit first, not the front. It's much easier to get the adjustment trying to pin it in the front of your garment than it is to try to reach around and pin it in the back. just double checking that I've put it in the exact same spot on both the left and right side just by folding my garment in half and double checking that they meet at the same place. And now I'm just sewing the straps on using my sewing machine. Now I'm going to sew the O-rings onto the front. So I'm just measuring either side from the armpit seam up and I'm pinning them in place. Just folding over that fabric and pinning them in place. Now I'm just gonna double check that it looks even on both sides by looping the straps through them and pulling them nice and tight. Once those are nice and tight, I'm just double checking that the O-rings are meeting at the same spot that not one of them is sitting higher than the other. I'm also cutting the strap length uh, a little bit shorter 
And I'm double checking the measurement on that just to make sure that those are gonna be even and pinning them in place. I'm always very fickle about measuring several times after I pin things in place. But everything looks good, so now I'm just sewing down the O-rings to the front of the bodysuit, but I'm not sewing down the straps yet. You can sew down the straps if you want, but I like to add these little metal snaps to them. It makes it really easy to get in and out of, and it also makes it adjustable. So I'm getting my little snap pieces ready here. There are four types of pieces for the snaps in total. There's two that are gonna make up the front of the snap and then one that is going to make up the back of the snap. The seller that I buy these from has sent a nice little picture that works great as a guide. So I would definitely recommend getting your snap pieces from Minkus Margo. I'm using some measuring tape and a little bit of Taylor's chalk to mark even spaces where I'm gonna put all my snaps and my rivets. I'm gonna use my sewing awl to poke holes through that way I can set the snaps through. And I'm making a hole on two sides of part of the strap. So that way I have somewhere to put the inner and outer pieces of the snap. I'm getting my first set of setting tools for setting the outside of the snap. The outside snap part is going to look like one of your rivet caps with this little concave piece underneath. I'm going to feed the post of it through one end and then I'm going to put the other piece on the inner part just like that. I'm going to set it using my tool. I find with the snaps, it's better to press a little bit more gently, and then if you need to set it a little bit more firmly, give it another little press with the tool rather than to over press the first time and set it all wonky and then have to sew new straps on. I'm setting two of the outer pieces on each one. That way I have two adjustment settings. So if I want it to sit a little bit lower, I can, or if I want it to sit a little bit higher, I can. There are also hand tools for setting these, but I find that the press works a lot better. Now that I have the outer pieces set, it's time to set the inner pieces. So I'm going to change the little dies in my machine. And the thing that you want to remember when you're doing this is which way you want the, the other piece sitting up so that they snap together. So the post is going to feed through the same way that it did on the outer piece. So you're going to feed the post through, it's going to be sticking up on the same side. And then you're going to put this weird little, I don't even know how to describe the shape of that tool, but you saw it in the video. And just like the other one, I'm going to press it firmly yet gently in place and then see how it just feeds through and snaps right into place there. And we're just gonna repeat the process on both straps, adding another one of these on each side.
switching out my tools so I can add some flat rivets. And I have ones that are the exact same size as the snaps, so they're going to disguise perfectly with them. These rivets are two pieces, like you've seen in a lot of my tutorials, where there's a little post that looks like a nipple, and then there's a cap that goes on top. So you just feed the post through the back of the strap, and then place the cap on top, and press until it snaps. And once we have all these snapped in place, we're going to go ahead and set them with the press. You can also use a hand tool if that's all you have handy, but like I said before, I prefer the press. setting the cap side down and the post side up and just firmly yet gently pressing down with the press tool. And I'm just going to set all these in place. And lastly, I'm going to add these round little rivets along the bust line. It's one of my favorite little ways to give a simple project an extra little bit of flair taking my sewing awl and very gently just poking the a small hole through it. You don't want to jam the sewing awl all the way through. Otherwise, you're going to have too big of a hole and the post will come out of the back. Just like I did with the rivets on the straps, I'm putting the post side through the back and then I'm setting the cap over top of it and pressing until it snaps in place and repeating the process all along the neckline. Now I'm going to use my press tool I'm going to set the cap side down into the press tool and just firmly yet gently press down on the press tool. Now you could wear this as a finished project, but I wanted to give it a little bit extra, so we're going to add some slashes to make this extra sexy. I'm using a pattern drafting tool just to kind of give myself a little guideline and double checking my measurements to make sure it's even on both sides. Before I start cutting the slashes, I'm just gonna make it even on both sides of the crotch and the booty seam. Now I'm just making little slashes going all the way up. I'm trying to make mostly even space in between. And you don't have to make these slashes super, super thin. I'd say I probably make them like between a half inch to a quarter inch wide because once you start pulling them and braiding them in between each other, they're going to stretch and get more narrow. And I just give them a little tug to stretch them out. And now I'm just going to do this little kind of, I describe it as like a little step ladder technique where you're kind of reaching up underneath the last one and then pulling up the next strap and then pinning at the very top. I actually have a really good clip of this technique in my braided and slashed leggings tutorial which I'll link. Just gonna cut into this just a little bit more so it looks even on both sides. Now that that side looks good, it's time to move on to the back. And I'm drawing the shape that I want. I'm basically gonna do a V going down to the butt and it's almost kind of like an almond shape that I do for this one. And I'm just gonna follow that pattern, just making straight slashes all across the back. And as I go, I'm just stretching this fabric out and double checking that it's even on either side. Now I'm going to do the same little uh, feeding under and pulling through method, but I'm only going to start it halfway uh, right at the small of the waist and I'm going to pin it on the butt. And now I'm going to do a different braiding technique where I pull it, I twist it over, and then I loop the next piece through it and repeat and then pin it up at the top. 
I like doing this technique for the back of it because it kind of gives it equal pulling tension on both the top and the bottom of the garment so it doesn't feel like it's pulling up your butt as much. Now I'm just sewing all those little pieces I pinned in place. I use a zigzag stitch for this. And there you go, you're done. There's your finished bodysuit. Thanks for crafting with me today. I hope you love how your project turned out. And if you wanna show it off, I have a Facebook sewing group where you can promote your sewing business, you can ask for advice, or you could just show off your projects. That's also in the description below. And make sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you wanna support the channel. Thanks so much for crafting with me.